Hello everyone and welcome to another presentation. In this video, we are going to learn about adjustment of status or most commonly known as AOS. This material will cover the following. First, what is adjustment of status? Adjustment of status timeline. How much does adjustment of status cost? What are the requirements for adjustment of status? How to get a green card through adjustment of status? How to check your status application? And what happens after a change of status? We also have here item number eight, which is the special considerations. The source of this material's um, information is boundless.com. So without further ado, let's hop into item number one. What is adjustment of status? The process for applying for a green card from within the United States is called adjustment of status. When you use AOS, you'll be able to stay in the United States while your application is being processed. And even if your visa expires before your green card is approved, you are still allowed to stay in the US. The alternative to AOS is consular processing. This is when you apply for a green card from outside the United States. When you use consular processing, your green card will be processed by your nearest US consulate or embassy, and you'll remain outside the United States until your green card is approved. Both AOS and consular processing have their own timelines, application forms, supporting documents, and costs, but the green card eligibility requirements are identical. Now, this, this guide will cover the rules in AOS for getting a green card through adjustment of status. Adjusting your status can take anywhere from one to three years, depending on your situation. And the best way that one can ensure the shortest time possible to have your AOS approved is filing your work properly the first time. And getting a green card through AOS can be a really slow process and the exact adjustment of status timeline will depend on your situation. The adjustment of status processing time also varies depending on where in the United States you apply from, so make sure to check your nearest USCIS offices processing times. All right, so the big question is, how much does it cost to do the adjustment of status? You'll first have to pay fees associated with your initial petition. And for adjustment of status application, you'll typically pay 535 US dollars to file your I-130 petition. If you're filing a different petition, check the filing instructions to make sure you pay the correct fee. Once your petition is approved, you'll pay a separate fee to file your I-1485 green card application. For most applicants, the fee is 1,140 US dollars plus an 85 biometrics fee. If you're under 14 and with one of your parents' I-1485s, you'll pay 995. And if you're under 14 and filing your own, you'll pay the full 1,140 US dollars. The biometrics fee is waived if you're under 14 or if you're age 79 or more. Both filing fee and the biometrics fee are waived completely if you're filing form I-485 as a refugee. Immigrating to the United States can be expensive, but preparing your AOS application doesn't have to be. You can do this yourself or you can also um, seek for help, like for example, boundless.com and citizen path or rapid visa. They do um, services for um, adjustment of status as well. 
So what are the requirements for adjustment of status? To use AOS, you must be eligible for a green card in one of the following categories. Family. You can qualify for a family-based green card as the spouse, child, parent, or other close relative of a U.S. citizen or a green card holder. Second is through employment. You can qualify for an employment-based green card through sponsorship by your employer or based on your accomplishments and abilities. For other, you can qualify for a green card on humanitarian grounds through the diversity lottery or for other reasons. More specifically, adjustment of status is the immigration process for the following marriage visa types. IR6 or CR6 spouse and accompanying IR7 or CR7 child when the sponsor is a U.S. citizen, F2A category for F26 spouse, F27 child when the sponsor is a legal permanent resident, a.k.a. a green card holder, CF1 spouse, CF2 child when the sponsor is a U.S. citizen, and the foreign spouse is adjusting status from a K-1 visa. To use AOS, you must have used a valid visa for or the visa waiver program for your most recent entry to the United States. Most applicants must be in lawful status when they first apply for adjustment of status, even if their visa later expires before the process is complete. One exception is if you are applying for adjustment of status through marriage to a U.S. citizen. In such cases, you can use AOS even if you overstayed on a visa, as long as you originally entered the U.S. United States with a valid visa or a visa waiver. Before you can apply for AOS, you must make sure a green card is available for you and this is automatically the case if you're applying as a spouse or immediate relative of a U.S. citizen. If you're applying as a more distant relative called family preference or if you, your sponsor is a green card holder, you could face a long wait. You can check your priority date to see when you might be able to apply. And if you're applying for a green card through employment or other grounds, you can also face a wait before a green card becomes available. Next, let's uh, look at understanding the 90-day rule. If you're eligible for a green card and in lawful status, you'll still need to be careful not to trigger the 90-day rule. This is a guideline that U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services uses to determine whether AOS applicants misrepresented their intentions when they first arrived in the United States. Many temporary visas such as F1 or B1, B2 visas can't be used if you plan to immigrate permanently. By contrast, other temporary visas such as H-1B or L-1 allow dual intent and can be used if you plan to move permanently to the United States. If you are in a visa that doesn't allow dual intent, you could run into trouble when you apply for AOS since it shows that you intend to immigrate permanently. The U.S. government could reject your application or revoke your current visa if they decide you secretly plan to immigrate when you first enter the United States. To make that determination, the USCIS official handling your case will apply the 90-day rule, a guideline that allows the officers to infer that you misrepresented your intentions if you adjust your status within 90 days of arriving in the United States. It's possible to convince the USCIS officer that you genuinely didn't intend to immigrate when you first arrived but you'll have to offer evidence and will face an uphill struggle. Even after the 90 days, USCIS offers can use their own judgment. Officers can use their own judgment to determine that you misrepresented your intentions, but still, you're much less likely to have problems if you wait until more than 90 days have passed before filing an AOS application. All right. So how do you get a green card through adjustment of status? First step, you check your green card eligibility. Second, 
Have your sponsor file the appropriate petition for your green card category. Again, we have three categories for family green card. That's uh, using Form I-130. For employment-based applications, that you'll file the I-140 form. And for humanitarian application, you'll file the I-730 form. Once your petition has been filed, USCIS must grant it. The timeline of this can vary between several months to well over a year, depending on your individual circumstances. Step number four, once the USCIS grants your petition, you can check for up-to-date visa availability for your green card category. This will vary depending on your circumstances, green card category, and country of origin. There's no wait for the immediate family members of U.S. citizens, but applicants in other categories must wait years or even decades. And once a visa is available, file your Adjustment of Status application, Form I-485. You may also want to file requests for a work permit and advance parole travel document so that you can work and travel freely while waiting for a decision on your AOS application. After receiving I-485 form, USCIS will mail you a date, time, and location to take your fingerprints and eye scan. This is also known as the biometrics appointment. Step number seven is based on the information provided in the I-485 form and the background check conducted by USCIS you may or may not be required to attend an in-person interview. If you're called for an interview, the officer will place you under oath and ask you questions about your application. Step 8. USCIS might require further evidence and will mail you a formal request if so. In some cases, you might also be called for a follow-up interview. And lastly, step 9. You will eventually receive a decision either granting or denying your application. You can also check your case status online at any time. If your application is granted, you will receive an approval notice in the mail, followed a little later by your physical green card. All right, now, how can you check your status application? So, or the status of your application? You can check updates on your green card application by entering your case number on the USCIS web site. This will provide you with information and updates throughout your green card application, including the green card um, that has been approved. All right. And after you change your status, so what happens? The exciting day arrives and you receive your green card in the mail. You can now work and live freely across the United States, travel overseas and return and benefit from a pathway to eventual U.S. citizenship. If you change your status through marriage and were recently married, you might receive a conditional green card good for two years. You'll have to upgrade this to a full 10-year green card as you near the end of a two-year two period. Depending on your green card type, you might be able to apply for citizenship once you've been a green card holder for three to five years. To be eligible for citizenship, you must pay your taxes, not be convicted for of a crime and not leave the United States for extended periods without a re-entry permit. And lastly, special considerations. Be careful with foreign travel because if you leave the United States during the AOS process, the U.S. government will assume you've abandoned your green card application and you'll have to start from scratch. To avoid this, you can request an advance parole travel document which will allow you to travel abroad and be readmitted to the United States without interrupting your application. So that's it. That's all for our topic, adjustment of status. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are holding on, keeping strong, and uh, yeah, good luck to each and everyone. Thank you and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.